Steve, how are you, brother? I'm good, mate. How are you? Yes, yes, I, I'm. I'm wonderful, mate. It's so great to have you on the show. Good to be on. Um, I'm, I'm laughing because Steve and I have had technical difficulties, so I'm not even going to talk about that. Steve, I first got to hear of you. It's, it was actually through Jameson's uh, travels. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, the American Marine. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, friend of mine, or, or at least a, a virtual friend, and obviously br- brother to both of us. And um, I saw him passing comment on the incredible interview you did with an elderly veteran um, in which you were discussing PTSD. And I know from, from our chat that you were... Royal Green Jackets, um, who amalgamated with the Rifles. Yep. What's it like when a when a historic regiment with a with a proud fighting history have to merge with 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 with, with another? Um, well, I was a Green Jacket for about three years um, before the amalgamation, um, and we uh, we did the very last Green Jacket patrol on Telic 9 in Iraq in 2006. It was the 31st of January. Um, did the last patrol, and obviously after we had a few photos and stuff, when we got back into the... Um, we were in the P-Jock, uh, just by the OSB. And uh, obviously, they took the photos and stuff. And then when we got back to uh, Basra Palace, we had to change cap badge. So we kept our old cap badges, gave us the new cap badge, uh, which is the, the bugle with the crown on it. Um, we put them on the stable, stable belt changed the rank slides changed and felt uh, a bit empty to be to be honest because you know when you join your regiments when you join um, your family you all share that same history the the rich history of your forefathers that created that history it felt like it was all taken away and the way they, they did it they said oh it's not it's not changed it's just all joined up with everyone else's. All your battle honours have joined with everyone else's. But to, to me, to a lot of us, it wasn't like that, you know what I mean? So we did lose a massive chunk of the, the battalion um, and imagine the regiment. Um, it, was, it was strange times, but the rifles then become one of the, uh, the four faces, if, if, if that makes sense, of the British Army and the poster boys, if you, like, if you like. And we went on to do some big tours. We went and did Herrick 10 after that. We did Kosovo um, and continue to do tours today. Yeah, so it was a very, very active regiment alongside the Paris and obviously with the Marines as well. So um, it, was, it, was, it was good and bad, you know what I mean? Because at, at the time, I was a career soldier. I wanted to stay in. I didn't want to go anywhere. So I took the rough, the smooth, you know what I mean? But you could see the you could see the, the battalion changing right before our eyes. You know, I mean the way it was being uh, managed and mentality of the, of the blokes coming in. It was uh, very different, especially with uh, the training establish- establishments as well, with like Catrick and places like that. I think the training changed rapidly. Yes, put up your your crest. Is it with the with the laurel leaves around it? Um, yeah, it's um, the Maltese cross. It's Maltese cross, and it's got the uh, the reef round it from the actual uh, Mar- Royal Marines cap badge from a battle on it that we we did. It, oh, is that true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's it's from the uh, the snake belt as well. We have a snake belt for our number twos. And what happened was um, obviously a long time ago when um, obviously the Royal Marines were on ships, um, Royal Green Jackets. But well, back then. We were obviously a diff- under a different name. We um, used to uh, rope ourselves to the side of the ships and protect the ships and support in support of yourselves. And in return, yeah, you give us that crest. Wow, I say is that true? People are probably wondering what I'm on about, Steve. What I mean is, I I didn't know if you you were getting me on a bite. <laughs> <laughs> um, so friends, I'm just saying. I'm just. I was trying to be a bit clever with the technology so we could look at some of the stuff that steve's done or some of the stuff we're talking about but if it's going to give us tech problems i'll just um i'll just stick (laughs) stick with the basics and can we talk about your your combat experience because it sounds like you've had quite 
a lot. Can you tell us what tours you did? You 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 yeah. Kosovo and Iraq. Yeah, I did. Uh, well, I got when I got first joined, I got to battalion um, within a matter of months. So I was straight out to Belize um, doing jungle training. Um, come back, and um, that was that was pre deployment training for Iraq. So jungle training ready for Iraq for for, uh, for the desert like. But then we were straight out to Iraq and Telic Nine. Um, that was a winter tour, and then we um, I come back. Then I did Kosovo, and then after Kosovo we ended uh, Afghan. That was Herak Ten. That was in Sangin. So you couldn't really have got more experience of being in theatre at that moment in time, could you? You've done the sort of the 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 what do you call it? The well, the trio. Yeah. It was very fast paced. It was um, from getting to battalion straight into um, pre deployment training to being deployed, operations, straight back, a bit of downtime, and it was straight back into uh, training and exercises. And it was, we were doing like three, four exercises a year alongside, obviously, pre deployment training and operations. So we were very, very active. I mean, it was non stop. So before we talk about Sue, can we talk about your 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 younger years? How was that? What prompted you to join up? Um, it's a, it's a number of things. Um, and when I do like other podcasts, I always give not different answers. They're all the same. They're all they're all true. But there's more. There's all multiple reasons. So like, obviously with family life and stuff like that, with with uh, the work scenarios, like as a young lad. I did engineering and I left school and stuff like that. And there's there wasn't much work out there. You know what I mean? And as a kid, um, my mum and dad got divorced very young. You know what I mean? And there was there was a lot of a uh, lot of not not problems as such, but in my head, it was always a case of um fitting in, if that's the right word. You know what I mean? It was like and then when my brother come along, it was always like you know, I've always felt a bit pushed out, but that's, that's that's just a natural thing for a young lad in a family like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I think it had some sort of reaction, some sort of effect on me because I always wanted to impress people. If that makes sense to you, not as an, an attention-seeking way, but I always wanted to show my family that I had potential to do great things. You know what I mean? I, I knew that there was always something in me that had to be released, and I had. You know, some sort of not gift, but I always knew that I had a strong, a strong, um, strong ethics and stuff like that. So the military was a natural thing for me. I always wanted to do it. Um, so when I did join and I got to uh, depot and started training, I felt right at home. You know what I mean? It was that what that was my uh, calling. Um, childhood growing up, just a typical lad. Just in the arse, causing havoc, getting amongst it, you know what I mean? Uh, mum, and dad, mum and my dad out late at night looking for me, the usual stuff, you know what I mean? But, um, but yeah, my, my calling was the military. Yeah, I, 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 I ask you about it because I know you talk a lot about trauma. Um, we talk, and, and, and for friends at home, Steve's got his own podcast. Um, which we will we'll put put links to Steve underneath yeah, underneath this one obviously but you talk a lot about trauma it comes up a lot on this um on my podcast and it's something I've got experience of and and um I think it's only us guys sort of boots on the ground so to speak that are, that are, that are making links between childhood trauma and upheaval and the character, the sort of character, not not always, but a typical sort of character that will join the mil- military, yeah. that maybe will feel a bit a bit different, a bit sort of misplaced in society. Um, I was extrovert, you know. If, if the ball went up the tree, it would be Chris Frawl that went and, and got yeah. it, you know. Yeah. If, if if there's a third floor window with a drain pipe, it's Chris Frawl that's going to climb down, yeah. Yeah. And and. You know, you are. Di- I, I was different, whereas a lot, a lot of kids would just, oh, what's he doing now? Yeah. Still, I'll meet my my friends from school. They'll remind me of all these things I used to do. It's yeah. still impression. It's you know. Yeah. Um. 
but of course not not taking anything away from the horrors of combat or should we say the horrors that some people experience in combat because some people are behind you know in the rear with a gear aren't they um, yeah so some people go in can go into a combat role and never get into a firefight or a serious firefight you know it's um it's I always like when I when I've spoke to like previous guests on my on my podcast and stuff like that. I'm, I've spoke to like John Smith. Uh, he's he was a ex Green Jacket, went on to become CP for God knows how many years. And he always says when people talk to about him about Iraq, uh, for example, he always says when were you there, what time of the year were you there, stuff like that. Because you can go to Iraq at a certain time and be at a certain and a certain tour, and you'll be dead. There'll be like one. One little snap, one little shooting, something like that, and that's it. Whereas, like, you can go when I was there, and some reason in the summer, you seem to be on heat. You know what I mean? The fighting's a lot more heavier. We were getting contacts every week, you know what I mean? With Afghan, we were in contacts and, you know, little, like, bursts and, sh- and shootings every day. So it depends. It's, it's always down to when you were there and what you're doing, you know what I mean? And it, it, that, that goes down to all tours, I believe. Yeah, so again, for our friend, friends at home, this isn't like a, a, you know, big dick competition. It's just, you had guys in the Falklands, for example, that said, it's just like being on exercise, you yeah. know, didn't didn't see a shot fired in anger, so to speak. I get uh, people message me and say, Chris, I was only in Northern Ireland, right? Pretty tame tour. Well. And one. Yeah, exactly. Our tour. Um, what, what, what were we there? 80, 89, yeah. or two commando. We had 171 serious incidents in yeah. one day, right? That's shootings, bombings, mortars, riots, kidnappings, yeah. uh, kneecappings. Hijackings, buses, public transport being set on fire, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I'm not. I'm, I don't even know if I'm getting to a point. I, I think we've kind of made the point. I mean, I, I've said this several times on the podcast. The guy behind, behind me, Jock, shot three times, and. The, the the I shouldn't say sniper because it was an AK forty seven, but the gunman yeah. fired eight to ten rounds. Three hit Jock, and I was next to Jock. So wh- wh- who were the other rounds fired at? Right? Yeah. That's yeah. that's as close in your life as you want to get to that shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it, 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 and unfortunate, I think I still got mine. And we were we were um, let's just call it sniped at. Uh, twice over there we had guys blown up all this sort of stuff so um yeah ju- i was just making a point really that that, yeah. that everyone's experience of being in the military is quite unique and not one experience is a you know better or worse than ever i guess it depends what you what you join for yeah um well you know the blokes the blokes will always have a person contest it's always like oh my tour was worse than yours and my my career was harder than yours it's that's just the bloke's mentality i mean so there is always there is always that you no know, big dick competition there, like but that's just that's just the banter side of it. I mean, the lads watching this now going, "Well, mine was tougher than yours." You know what I mean? It's just like that's just the way it is. That's just that's never going to change. Mm. So, what what we'll come back to is this: is this link between childhood trauma, which is I think we discussed this before the podcast. If you don't volunteer for childhood trauma no you know if you've got a, a an abusive parent or parents you're being neglected physically mentally um you might be being abused sexually or being battered what or, or, right you you're a toddler you can't make sense of that you've got no one to go you know this happened to me today can can i talk it through with you and yeah and and, and your two your infant mind all it sees is terror and confusion and and it yeah. in, internalizes it yeah and because it's internalized at such a young age you then carry it with you for life it, it you it, it's in there right yeah i'm not 
not saying again, friends, I'm not saying there's aren't techniques you, you learn to manage and cope with it. The scenario of a soldier going into combat is very different. You might see horrendous atrocities and I'm, I'm pretty sure you, you, that you've done Steve, right? But of course we volunteered for that. You know, we, we chose yeah. that. And in addition, we're adults so we can quickly make sense of it and, and compartmentalize it. Some people can't. We're, we're losing a lot of brothers and sisters and this is, this is tragic. Um, but if you take Mark Ormrod, for example, the Royal Marine that lost three limbs and then went on to say, do you know what? My life's actually better after losing three limbs than it was before. Yeah. It can just show you how the adult mind has the power to, yeah, meet, definitely, definitely. you know, one of my lads, um, Craig Wood, um, he was a trip down PT, um, on our tour on Herrick 10, um, pressure. It was a, a pressure pad. Um, he's gone now to, uh, sailing around the world. He lives on a boat and he's, he's loving his life. He absolutely mm-hmm. loves his life and he's, he's sailing right around the world. He's been to hundreds of different countries, loads of memories. And I, we didn't speak for a long time because I felt a bit bad. You know, it's like, he was, he was like under my command, if you like. Um, but we got speaking, and he's like, he goes, mate, he goes, my life's the best it's ever been, best it mm-hmm. could be. You know what I mean? So it's 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 down to obviously the adult mind stronger, but it's down to the, the the person to adapt and overcome, if you like. Steve, the reason I'm, I I mention th- this kind of scenario is we live in a very skewed society, right? Yeah, I know. I know you know that. So what what are the um, ramifications or the end result of early ch- early onset childhood trauma? Well, addiction is a massive one, right? Yeah. And yet addiction is a learned psychological condition. It's a mental health, let, if you want to call it an illness, whatever, right? It's i.e. it's not something that you choose to have in your life. Yeah. Um, substances cannot cause addiction that's just a lie that the the ruling elite put out just to further fragment society physically impossible for a a weed that grows in the dirt or a chemical in it to cause addiction right the driver of addiction is is for the most part early onset trauma right so we got this perverse society uh perverse situation in the uk uh, where if you get injured in combat, combat you volunteer for as an adult, and and you got paid well for it. And I'm not I'm not saying it's you know people should get hurt. Of course I'm not. That would be idiotic. But you chose that, right? And these individuals get lauded with hero status, whereas that abused child that then ends up you know doing this too much or doing this too much then becomes a pariah in it it, you know people just don't understand and yeah and um so you know next time so friends at home next time you see that person homeless in the street with a bottle next and just 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 think back to that that child that was getting battered or sex you know or raped um didn't that individual didn't choose that you know he 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 didn't choose that us we're all men we're all adults okay we were teenagers most of us when we joined but but we chose that we wanted yeah. that life we volunteered to go into combat we actually i wanted to you know i wanted to go straight into into yeah, a theater because i didn't want to spend my time in the marines and get to the end of it and go oh, i didn't go to war <laughs> right yeah. um silly silly but when you're young, you operate out your ego, Steve, right? And, yeah, and, and it, and definitely. It's like, yeah, yes. you've, um, when I when I when I joined, I was told that we were going to be deployed a lot. You know what I mean I was told that we were going straight to um, Afghan for our first tour. So that's one of the main main reasons why I joined. Um, like you say, you don't want to get to the end of your career and not achieved that. You know what I mean? So it's is. Uh, it was something that I was thriving for, but then the, the first tour got changed to Iraq and then it just escalated from there, tour after tour after tour. You know I mean, it was non-stop. Um, <laughs> I got out and literally the next year they were straight back to Afghan again. You know what I mean? Um, 
I I'm happy that I did those tours because I can say that in my time in the military, I achieved what I wanted to achieve. I wanted to I wanted to stay in. I wanted to go to SF basically. I wanted to go all the way with it. Um, but I I completed the tours that I set out to do. You know what I mean? But at the same time, it's a double edged sword because doing those tours had that huge impact on me. Um, and it wasn't till later on that it actually kicked in. You know what I mean, that uh, the actual trauma could become more apparent. If that makes sense. So, yeah. like, um, it was always one name that kicked that always stays in my mind. Like, I've lo- lost a lot of uh, friends, a lot of brothers in the army, but the main one was with the very first one, which was Daniel Coffey. And uh, we were in depot together, training together. So, when he got pinged, that was the harsh reality. And the very, very quick um, moment where I had to grow up very fast. You know what I mean? Because I realized what I was doing, where I was. And it was my decision, and this is the career that I chose. And I saw it in my head at the time. I was like, oh, what am I doing here? Why am I doing this? But at the same time, I was like, well, I've come here because it is the career that I want to do. And now we need to prevent more of this from happening. So let's go out on the on the front foot and go in order. I mean. Yes, mate, I do. When, um, when we lost... We had we had one of our oppo shot dead very early on in our tour of Belfast, and um, the marine who was a uh, was a senior corporal, so he'd been in the Falklands conflict. Actually, got shot in the Falklands conflict. Um, he was obviously trying to resuscitate this guy, and he and he'd been shot through the shot through the head, so it wasn't very pleasant. And then he just stood up and went like that. And I remember thinking, and I wasn't on the on the ground. I was the guy that had opened the. I was man in the the main gate at the time, so I was the guy that had opened the gate to let this patrol out. Yeah. Within five or six minutes of them going out the gate, you suddenly had all these rounds going down. It was eighteen rounds going down so you, so we, we we were just on the radio then waiting to see what what you know what the hell's this i mean it sound, sounds like a full on firefight right and when i heard that this you know how professionally this corporal had done with it it was just like that we had a you know when when everyone regrouped in the barracks the co came out or the oc rather and he just said right fellas unfortunate incident Put it beyond us, let's crack on, we got a job to do, and everybody did, right? It was that yeah. simple. But I was so proud, Steve, to be in that mindset. Yeah. You no, know, that military that that well, I'm gonna say rural rural marines mindset of just this is it, fellas. And subsequently, yeah, I I don't know. I I I just carried that on. Yeah. Um you know, like when my mo- my mother died, my mum died in my arms, my stepdad died in my arms, and uh, my best mate drowned on on holiday. And even with him lying at my feet dead, I'm just like, move on, right? Move and on. That, that's just been, I'm not, I'm not fucking heartless or anything, mate. I just, I, I, no. I. I, I won't do depression, you know. I've done that before. Yeah. Never do it, never doing that again. No. Nope. I'm like that no. now. I'm like that. Everything I've been through now, I'm like, well, I've been there and it didn't get me any anywhere. It didn't get it didn't get me in a better place. It made things ten times worse. So I'm I'm one of them now it's like all the bad things that have happened in the past year within the family and stuff like that. Like, yeah, it's upsetting, but it's like move forward. Just got to keep going forward. You know what I mean it's mm. like keep the positivity going, keep everyone else going. You know what I mean, and um, it's pay it pays off. It really does. Positivity, positivity breeds positivity. You know what I mean if I sit there and go into my dark place and lock myself away and hit the bottle and do this and do that, it's not going to get me anywhere. It's not going to get me family anywhere. You know what I mean so? Yeah, you've got to learn from your mistakes. Basically, move forward. 
Yeah, and the reason I, I'm, I'm, I met friends at home, the reason I'm mentioning my, my story and apologise, I'm talking a little bit o- over you, Steve, but I did want a conversation. Did I did want a conversation with you? You know, not not we 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 don't do interviews on this show, <laughs> but the reason I mention it is I'd by the time people started dying in my adult life, left, right, and Chelsea, it, it this was after. Uh, like all my massive drug, like the the biggest part of my drug problems, right? When I completely lost my mental health, and I yeah. did spend I did spend months traumatized, you know, two, 18 months of chronic depression, just couldn't couldn't get up, mate, just couldn't get up, right? And <sighs> what am I saying? If I had to explain why that was, that was a manifestation of for the first time in my life, I'm having to deal with this childhood shit, right? Yeah. Nothing to do with being in the in the military for me. And the reason yeah. I'm saying this is just to try to start getting a conversation going about how much of, of, of this veteran's mental health crisis is yeah. to do with childhood trauma, which is yeah. then kind of... Um, kicked off for want of a word by our experiences in the military perhaps um yeah. or do, do do you get i i don't know if i'm making sense mate I'm, I'm yeah yeah it makes sense um it's when i got back from iraq from tag nine um i went i come back home and i went up the rails in a bad way and i wasn't sure why it was happening i just i just my anger went but that's that's where my fuse fell off, basically. So I'd go from naught to sixty in a million miles. You know, it, it's just the aggression was like uncontrollable. I was emotional. I was highly strung. I was like getting upset over minor things. Like, every every molehill was the three peaks. You know what I mean? It was it was crippling. And I had um, I had a, uh, the, uh, when I come home, I went to my mother's house, and we had um, a scenario where. My fuse went, and I went absolutely berserk outside, and I caused a lot of damage, um, mentally and physically, and within the family. Um, I was taken away in, a, in an ambulance, um, lost a lot of blood from a skull, from my head, put my head through a window, and um, from there that destroyed the relationship with my family. Um, I was then take, I was I then flown back to Northern Ireland, the Ballykinner, where I was based at the time. And I was then put into, uh, I had a uh, string come out for, for six sessions. Um, and then after assessments and the assessments with me, they turned around and said, the problem with you isn't with war, it's with your childhood. Which, as soon as she said it, because um, what they used to do was, it was a, it was, it was a lady that was uh, helped me with it all. She turned around and she goes, when I say certain words, I want, I'm, if it makes you angry, I will leave the room. And you get, you, you know, whatever you've got to do, you know what I mean? Because at the time, no one can come near me. I, I had to guard, the guard room outside, you know, keep, trying to keep me controlled. And there was like eight blokes out there and they couldn't because the adrenaline and the anger took over, you know what I mean? And I was a young lad. I was just got back from Iraq. I've been on top cover. I've been kicking doors down. We're doing a bit of, uh, we're doing you know house clearances and compound clearances with, with SF. So it was constant aggression every single day. So when I come back home, that's all I knew. It was drilled. I was conditioned, and that's all I knew. So every time I walked up to a front door, I was checking around the frame. I was checking around it. I was checking. I was doing you know, five and twenties and stuff like that. So I was in that fight mode constantly. And it's only until recently that I've started to drop out of it. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, so she would say a few words, um, and she said the problem lies with your childhood. It's pre-military, so she very quickly left the room, and I put a filing cabinet through the window, and I just I blacked out. And I used to have blackouts where the aggression would take over, and I could have no control of it, and I'd come back around, and it would just be I'd normally be be worse off than the room or what's around me. I mean, with injuries, self harm, and stuff like that, because. The anger, I couldn't get it out quick enough. I couldn't release that valve quick enough. You know what I mean? And that was something 
that stuck with me. And after that, the uh, the support stopped um, for whatever reason. And that was it. Then we got ready for pre-deployment for Kosovo. Um, but that's always stuck with me because I've never understood why it triggered me. You know what I mean? That, that was, she said that and that triggered me. I don't know why. Whether it's an underlying issue or whether it's something else, I don't know. And then, um, well, we're trying to get to the bottom of it now, get, going for the support now, like, you know what I mean? Yes. I think the thing that, you know, was sort of a catalyst for me is when I left the military, I felt less equipped for life than before I joined. I didn't feel particularly well equipped for life then. I had no, I think I had two O levels from school. Yeah. Which for young people, that's what you call GCSEs now or, or a bit, bit similar. Did three O levels in the or three GSEs in the Marines, funnily enough. Yeah. When I left, I I didn't feel like I could write a CV. I, what 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 do I put on it? I can face paint my face brown and shoot a rifle. Who that that's yeah. just nobody wants those skills in Civvy Street. No. People say, Oh yeah, but you've been a Royal Marine. That that's kudos. That will no, most people don't even know what the who the Royal Marines are. They're like, is that that like Navy? Yeah. Is it is that what you ain't what you yeah. in the army, we right? It 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 doesn't it really it might count for some people. Uh might, you know, might put you a bit sort of higher up the list for a security guard or something, but I didn't even feel I could do that. And yeah. Um there I was stuck in I say stuck. I mean, I went to Hong Kong, I went there to run what was a really successful business that I'd started while I was in the Marines. By the time I got there, it had all crashed. Um, and then when you start trying to doctor your emotions with drugs or alcohol and, and you haven't had the life experience to know the consequences of these actions, yeah, like everyone, you know, a lot of people like a drink, a lot of people like a splare for some party drugs or whatever it might be. That's all well and good, but when you start relying on it as a crutch, yeah, your life is just on that. Tra- you know, you're gonna crash and burn. Yeah. I'm not saying if you make it through, and sadly, some people don't. I'm not saying it's necessarily a bad thing. I wouldn't change my experiences for. No, for anything, I'm really... I, I look, I look back and go, oh, what have I done here? What, what a, you know, volatile life and stuff like that. But then I think to myself, well, where am I now? Who have I got now? I've got my family, I've got my kids, stuff like that. So now it's like, yeah, I'll do it again to get where I am now. Some people have the greatest lives ever and don't find their their happiness at the end of the at the end of the tunnel. You know what I mean, I have, so it's. You've got to do what you got to do, and you could. Everyone's experience in life's different. You just got to take the rough, the smooth, and it's how you adapt and overcome. That's 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 what makes it. Do you think part of the problem with this? Not I, I say veterans' mental health and suicide crisis, but of course, we're probably seeing a, one across the board. So you know, sorry, I say civilians are just for want of every, everybody, right? Yeah. Um, particularly, and let, let Steve, I don't say any of the, um, with respect to what's been going on this last year and a half, or is it even two years now? I've lost track. Let's not mention yeah. any of those, those words. It just, it, it just gets us yeah. in trouble on the platforms. But, um, with respect to it though, my God, if people can't see we're heading for a massive mental health crisis with a, with yeah. a health service that is just Underfunded and ill-equipped to deal with it, then uh, yeah. I'm 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 I'll beg to differ. Right, it it's not good. Right. Um, distort- the thing is, well, if, the thing is, if 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 the government, if you like, if you want to call it that, um, admitted to a mental health problem within the veteran community and within soldiers, it's going to cost a lot of cost them a lot of money. It's going to cost them a lot of money to put the funding in place and get the the, the right things in place, and it's just something that they just don't want to admit. Yeah, that's that. That's that's my opinion. Yeah, and there's I'm guessing there's other factors, Steve, like all the these um, corporations that make billions off war. Yeah, 
they course. they need they need can we say naive youngsters to keep fueling the military industrial complex and and um i think they're already starting to see a hit a, a kind of a a bit of a hit there they've had to extend royal marines commando training by a month really um yeah well not just that there's always been i mean for the ever since i can remember there's they've had problems with recruiting hence all these glossy adverts that you see on yeah. the telly and stuff right now the additional problem is people are rocking up to limston and they don't know what's hit them yeah right? it, it's like it you know being a commando it's a tough training and and and, and I, you know uh joining the army there's certain things you you know you 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 there's a certain mental resilience that you you're required to get through it and in this kind of fractured fragmented dumbed down um softened society that we that we're seeing people just don't have those skills anymore so yeah. they're getting to limps and they don't know what's hit them and and so they're having to have an extra month to prepare them just to begin begin training, training. right in it and this is not people listening we are not slagging off young people as a youth worker that's that's obviously not 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 my forte just saying it how how it is um but i get i mean i get i've had two messages this last couple of weeks saying chris um i'm joining the marines in so and so can you give me some advice because i've got to move to the other end of the country and you know i'm a bit scared and you know we talk about not i mentioned the word naivety or that's if you knew the job you that steve's had to do in combat you'd know that moving to the other end of, that's that's the least of your problems son <laughs> that's the enjoy yeah. Yeah. that's the enjoyable bit right yeah um, but, i remember yeah. when i first got the train and i first went and um i was a bit nervous because i was like leaving home and doing this and doing that but um next minute you're on a, you're on a flight to Iraq you know what I mean and then before you know it you're coming back and you're like you go the opposite way then you get you're getting nervous to go home because you've been away for so long and you get home and you get you, you walk you walk, you know you walk through the front door and you go and you sit down and within two or three days my feet are itchy I've got to go again you know what I mean and it's took me so long to settle after that because you get in the routine of you go away for so many months, you come home for a few weeks, you go home for a couple of, and you come home for like two or three days and you call back out again and it's like, you're never home. So when you finally do get out, you get home, you're like, I need to go again. And you got that urge to go somewhere, but there's nowhere to go. You know what I mean? But uh, but yeah, that is the least of the worries is moving to the end of the country. I get that as well. I get a lot of uh, emails, a lot of messages and DMs and stuff, people going, have you got any advice for joining the military? Any advice for joining this? Well, it's like, well, it's down, down to the experience, down to the individual. You know I mean, everyone's going to be different. Um, I don't know who you are as a person. I don't know what your traits are. I don't know how mentally strong you are. I've seen some of the most, that appear to be the most mentally strong, physically strong alpha males around fail week one, day one. You know what I mean? Can't cope with it. And I've seen the smallest, quietest lad excel and become the best in the business you know what I mean it's yes. all that it's all down to the person and how they um, adapt to the situation you know what I mean you have to be very 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 flexible mentally and physically you know what I mean and it, it, it is it is a tough job whether it be um, infantry or marines or whatever it is a very very tough job um, and, but it goes right back to like uh, mental health people turn around to me and say you've Witness so much trauma. You you you've been through so much. How how are you coping? I was like, well, it's not about what I've been through. It's about the person. You could have, like I say, every time you could have a ten year old girl who her dad's just left, and she's just stumped a toe, and it's triggered her, and she could have the worst time of her life. Like, is mine any worse than hers? No, because it's what she's going through at that time. What she's feeling is down to her perception on on her. her life at that time so it doesn't matter who you are it's it, it, it is tough when people ask me stuff like that but it's like you've got to say you know, just get down there do your best and expect the worst I mean 
Going back to the mental health, health um, uh, crisis, I'm, I, I think part of the problem is when you're in the military, you join as a le- what, what, what's referred to as a left brain person. So you haven't developed the empathy, the creativity, your artistic self, your love, your compassion, your humanity. You're very much driven by this. I'm going to be a soldier. I'm going to shoot guns. I'll yeah. play, I'll play the Xbox, you know, this, this, and while you're in there, you're obviously not, you, you, you're on a jer- massive journey of education and experience of which you'll, you'll see what you'll get from all around the world, but you're not on one of enlightenment. And so when you leave, say maybe after 15 years and you're suddenly dumped in civvy street, things aren't going right. On top of that, you got your childhood trauma is going to come back and haunt you. That's going to, that's going to compound with what you've seen in action. Um, and as you start to go like that, and you you know you're drinking or whatever it might be, and you look around and you see buddies that aren't experiencing what you're going through, although you don't rip, you, you know that's not something you think of, but their careers are going like this, and they've got the Mercedes in the driveway and the happy families and and because you're what I would say living in the matrix so you're controlled by all these bullshit constraints of what essentially are like evil corporations and you're you play by their rules you you're trying to get the goals of the Rolex and the this and the and the yeah and so you just begin to see yourself as a failure and 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 again, when you see what well, what do you do when your your mental health suffering, you try to doctor it by doing more of this. So you you go, you know, you Deep go m- more this way. And so my advice to any veteran that's where well, anyone that's suffering, but if we're talking about veterans, is you gotta shake that fucking shit off and start yeah. living your own path, you know. Yeah. You, you you are a perfect being under the universe yeah. we all are it's these so you know these what i call the sociopaths these elitist you know bankers and, and corporate structures that want you to play by their rules and while you play with them you can't be happy you know you can't the the, the rolex the mercedes the three at it's you you know, if you're not enlightened up here, none of that's ever going to, there, there will always be something. And yeah. so for people that are struggling with your mental health, if you're depressed, if you're, if you're feeling bad, fuck off all that shit, you know? Yeah. Start waking up in the morning and realizing you're perfect as you are. Your experiences you've gone through, no matter how horrendous, you'll get over them. You'll find you'll find yep. ways to work it through. We all, yeah, we've all done things we regret. You know, we've all done things that probably weren't looking back. We we shouldn't have done what whatever it may be. That's fine. That's where your forgiveness of self comes in, right? Yeah, ultimate forgiveness of self. Um, I guess that's bulking up your self esteem, Steve, isn't it? You know, you 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 know. Yeah. You've got to have your good foundation. So wake up in the morning, love yourself, respect yourself, yeah. play by your rules. If you can sit in the garden with a sun on your face, perfect. That's all you need to achieve in life, right? If you've got a roof over your head, that's that's a bigger bonus. You know, that's home life. Bonus. <laughs> I think home life's the biggest one for me. Yeah. Home life. If I've got, before I met my partner and we've got our baby and stuff like that, my life was very... Um, uprooted if you like there was no stable base but now i've got that home life and i've got that that concrete foundation and i can't wander off too far if that makes sense i've always got my base i'm always grounded the roots are in the ground all i can do now is just grow you take a tree out the ground it's got no but the roots aren't in the ground it doesn't grow it just falls apart and that's the way i see my life now home life has always been my savior let's Steve, let's talk a little bit more positive. And again, friends at home, I apologise. It's a little. It, 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 we've had a serious conversation, but then 
you know, people hanging themselves in their kid's bedroom is that's fucking serious. You know, yeah. uh, it, 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 it's awful. And these things need to be discussed. It's only guys like us that are discussing these things. Yeah. The powers that be don't want this discussed. They want to fuel their war machine. You know, they want their statistics of, to, to look good on, on, on paper. So, but, but moving on from there, let, let's put some light into this or some brevity into this conversation. What what have you found has worked for you? And at what, what was there a particular moment where the light started to come back into your life again? Um, my recovery really was very, it's very cliche. It's very, um, it, it, I was going, I was, I was uh, abusing steroids. Um, it's something I did on my last last year of the army. Uh, I was drinking heavily. Um, I was violent. I was actually working security. I was actually working on the doors um, for quite a lot, quite a while. And it got to the point where I was becoming that violent and that aggressive towards everyone that brought a minor threat to the door or to to to, our, you know, to my team. Um, where I was becoming tired, I was I felt drained after every day. Every time I woke up, I was like, "Oh, I'm still here, not again." You know what I mean, the suicide attempts didn't work. Um, depression was all the time. I wasn't anxious, like really anxious, but I was very um, alert, hyper vigilant. You know what I mean? So it got to the point where I went. The word I was very docile I went very lethargic um, I was strong I was fast I was well, I was pumped full of um, testosterone but my mind was very slow I was very like don't care okay, I don't know if you know what I mean and it wasn't until I met my partner she she walked in on my life and um, that's what made me think hang on there's something else I mean and she treated me like a human being I wasn't treated like Oh, I wasn't. Oh, that was the first time I, I believed that I wasn't a veteran. I wasn't an ex-soldier. That's when I believed that I was a human. You know what I mean? She made me feel like the way she spoke to me, the way she came across, and how oh, she made me feel like there is someone I can speak to. And that's when I started unloading very, very quickly, unloading not stories, but unloading who I was and what I'd been through onto her, um, and then. Over time, it started to get better. You know, I stopped taking uh, straight away. I stopped taking um, testosterone. I stopped taking painkillers. I, I slowed the drinking right down. I stopped for a long time. Um, and then it's when we had our baby. That's when I just went, that's it. No. I stopped smoking. I stopped drinking. I've never taken anything. I, I, I get anxious taking painkillers now, you know what I mean? Um, and that's what's completely changed me because it's a very... Um, there's a lot of responsibility in having kids, as you know, and you have to put yourself. You have to put yourself last. You know what I mean? And it's, that that scenario then took me back to my military days, where it's like your rifle and your lads come before you. And then yeah, I felt at home again. Then you know what I mean? And then when we obviously got our house together and we moved in, and we all were a happy family. That's where my feet got grounded and. Obviously, dark days are still there. You're always going to have your dark days. When you've been through trauma, you're going to have your negative parts. You're always going to go, can I do that? You're always going to feel a bit a bit down or you're going to have anxiety. And But as long as you've got your ways of getting through those things, because over time, the past decade, I've learned to be this person. So when, when, when like people turn around to me, oh, if you could take a pill and it would wipe it all out, you go back to being state before the military, would you be happy? Go oh, no. I need to have my panic attacks. I need to have that darkness creeping around behind me because it gives me the strength mm -hmm. to beat it to be a better person for my daughter. You know what I mean? So I have to lie there in bed in the morning and go, you know, what's going to happen today? All this, and I go, no, I can do it. I look at my family. No, I can do it. I will do it. I've got to beat it. I've got to be better. And more so now when I started the podcast and I started my channel and uh, started doing stuff like that, 
I'm getting a lot of messages saying, oh, what you're saying, I'm, I'm going through that. Can I feel better for it? Thank you for that. And that just, it's sort of like, it's a different form of injection. It's not a testosterone inje- injection, but it's it's a, a, a self-worth injection. I'm, I've got, I've found my call and I've got my self-worth. I know my self-worth now. I'm like, okay, every time someone says thank you or every time someone says, I believe what, you know, what you're doing and what you're saying is helping me. I go, right, okay, on to the next one. What can I do now which can do more for people? You know what I mean? And I know now if I go back to the dark and I, you know, I try and drive my car into a wall again or I start to OD again, I'm not only just letting myself down on my family, I'm also letting the, the harm of God know so many people that have watched my story and hang on to my words and stuff like that. Like, it's just going to make them go, well, it didn't work for them. He's just been chatting shite for the past hour long. You know I mean, and how, what's it going to cause the the, the the ripples turn into tidal waves? You know what I mean. So it's that's my reason for staying here. That's my reason for holding on to the light and keep pushing forward. And and with that, the better I become, the better other people become, and the better other people become, the better I become, and then the better it makes my daughter and my family because it's spreading positivity. Went on a tangent then, didn't I? No, mate, what you just you just nailed it in what you just said. Can I just add to it? And and this is only my story, but I want to just put a little bit more light in there if I can. Yeah. And that's I never have a bad day, Steve, you know. Um what I mean by that is Sorry, I'm trying to say this without sounding arrogant. This, ain't, this is not about me. This is about yeah. people out there that might be struggling that think, have yeah. I got to do this for the rest of my... Have I got to back... No. Nah. You know, I get people say, you back on the drugs? I'm like, show me anywhere in, in my three memoirs in my life where I've ever said I stopped. You're making yeah. assumptions. You're making assumptions that you look at me now, you think I couldn't possibly be the happiest man in the world if I still, you know, did past behaviours. And I've never said no to nothing, nothing, because there's only experiences in life. There's no yeah. such thing as a bad experience or a good one. There's only experience. Once you learn, for me, once I learn to take that on board, yeah. And you stop beating yourself up about being human. Yeah. So yeah. if if tomorrow, you know, whatever it might go and drink a bottle of whiskey or do this, that, and, and the other, I'm not, no, I'm not suggesting anybody does, right? My yeah. life is irrevocably, I think that's the right word, <laughs> irrevocably better when I'm just completely off off it, it just is. I'm firing so much, it actually frightens me. I think I might be a bit mental, <laughs> right? But if I decide to do whatever tomorrow, and I and I, that's my prerogative, right? Yeah. Do you know what? I'm still the happiest man in the world, even though it comes over you and the the anxiety comes up, the regret, yeah, yeah. the shame, or or um, to me that's like a fog, mate. That I'm just stood behind and I'm still me. Right. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm just trying to put some light in there to say that you can get yourself in a, such a mentally secure position that whatever life throws at you, at you're in, you you okay. just become titanium, right? You just become um, titanium. What I will say is, I'm probably a bit further down the line than yourself, Steve. You know, I'm I've, I've been doing, I'm a, I'm an old dog, <laughs> right? Drank, drank pretty much every day for 30 years and all the rest of it. Um, that's, a, that's a long time to kind of get things in order. The, yeah. the issue comes in is where if you've got kids, you can't afford to take 30 years because every time you do that stuff, it's that affected. Works. It's the knock on effect is them, right? They're the one that are not getting the attention. They're the one that wondering why mummy or daddy are not, you know, why am I not getting the hugs and the kisses today? You know, all this yeah. sort of stuff. So what Steve's saying is incredibly um, 
you know, in, in, incredibly valuable. Um, I just, yeah, sorry, I just was just trying to put some light at the end of the tunnel for people that are thinking, yeah, but I still, I still have, you know, I still relapse and I still fall down. And it's like, fucking, it's called experience. You, you learn. learn by it and, and, and move you're not on. Failing. You're not failing, you're learning. I mean, yeah. What's, um, what um, strategies then have worked for you? Anyone that's in any of my sort of life, people on my Patreon that join my, my 10 quid a month life coaching, I'll say the same thing to them as I do to my, my Facebook community or when people approach me for, for private coaching and that sort of stuff. I, I tell you maybe five, maybe six things at the most that I do, and that's all I do. Yeah. Anybody on this planet can start doing them tomorrow, right? Really simple. I did. I mean, wake up, love yourself. So when you sit up in bed, it's like you are a fucking legend. Remember that today. Yeah. That's what you are going out that front door. Simple. And, and that includes all your past forgiveness for stupid shit you might have done. But next thing, smile at the sun. That's just saying, thank you, universe, for giving me this life. I'm still here. I'm still fighting. A lot of my mates are dead. They can't be here smiling at this sun and going out on their mountain bike or taking their kid down apart. They can't be. I'm here for them. I'm lucky. Third thing, take action. For me, a jog around the block, get some air in your lungs, get some stuff firing in your head. Yeah. But it shows you that you have the ability to take charge of your day. Fourth thing, green smoothie round about midday. I haven't had breakfast for, for years other than my uh, other than other than a cup of tea. But that green alkalize your body if you're not alkaline you're gonna be it has an yeah. effect you know you've got to be alkaline right not gonna bang on about that it sounds like a, a lecture um lay off the drugs and alcohol even one split or half a glass of wine on a night knocks you off your vibration you you lose contact with a you know you might kid yourself yeah but i've earned it and it may it, it yeah we get that i did it for i, I had that reasoning for 30 years but what I will say is, if you can get off it, my God, you enter fucking parrot, you know, you 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 enter like a new found paradise. Yeah. Um, and then there's a few other things. Like I I, I refuse to have negatives. You know, every neg yeah. t- t- turns to positive, you know. Um, and yeah, and that's it. And then everything else follows. Like your relationships get better. You put out a much more positive sort of vibe for for, for stuff. You your productivity, which is really important when you do the sort of stuff I do, like the pot, it just goes through the roof and you get yeah. more done in one day than previously you did in a month. It, it's yeah. just incredible. So so these are the things that work for me. Have you got anything to to add there, Steve? Or do, does this ring bells to you? Is it, yeah, is, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, morning is definitely the biggest impact for the start of the day. Um, for me, it's uh, looking at my family because uh, I, I, I'm up and I'm out the house for half hour every day. I mean, so for me, it's like I look at my family while they're still asleep. I go, yeah, let's go and do it. I mean, it, it's, it's give me, give, I always have that reason. And I think the biggest things for me would be uh, routine is creating that routine and sticking to that routine. If it's, if it goes to the left a little bit or to the right, just doesn't matter as long as that routine is in place and be highly disciplined with it. Be very disciplined with it. Like, right, it's right down to like, when my daughter was born, it was like, right, okay, she has a bottle at this time, she was the bed at this time. Keep doing that, keep doing that. And sometimes it was tiring, sometimes it's like, oh, it's the same thing all the time, but then it creates that routine throughout the day and throughout the life and then now she just goes to bed at that time, you mean, it's just a routine and we're all in that set thing and being disciplined with it it's reminding me of my military life of you have you have company detail you have your jobs for the next day you have to prep your kit you do this you do that and that's what carries me through is being disciplined with it so it's like okay don't drink at all in the week i mean have a little drink at the weekend but we'll we'll plan that we won't, it won't be off the cuff i mean we'll plan that i mean we'll, we'll buy x amounts of stuff and we'll do this the next day we'll have activities for the sunday 
and we have, we have our routine. You mean, and that's it's that routine that keeps me down, keeps me stops me from floating off. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, and like I say, me being the age, I think at the age I am now, um, with my family and stuff like that, I'm in that routine now where I don't want to be out at night. I don't want to be leaving unless I go to work. You know I mean, but I don't want to be out drinking and doing this and doing that. I want to be. I want to be a good person. I want to be a good dad. I mean, um, I think that, that takes over most is having a good cause, having a reason, having a reason to be here. That, yeah. I, I, I just live off that. I actually oh, get up at uh, 25 past four in the morning. So five minutes before this guy. Did I tell you I was a Royal Marine, Steve? Did I tell you I was a green jacket? <laughs> <laughs> tell you I don't give a shit. <laughs> Oh, I do. I do love doing. I love these podcasts. But um, 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 oh, I had a really good question. I was going to ask you that, or some, something I was going to point out. Um, oh yeah, that's it. Have you found you you have a very different attitude towards uh, relationships now? I what. What constitutes the friends that you want to have around you? Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, I've lost, obviously, obviously, when you get out the military, you lose contact and you lose a lot of touch with you know, a lot of old mates and stuff like that. But I find now that I keep my circle very, very small. I keep, I, you know, I've got my family and stuff like that. Um, but I keep my, my family, very, uh, my, my circle very small. If I have any inkling or anything about, Anyone that I don't like, or the traits aren't where I where I they don't sit well with, with myself, my moral compass, then I'll cut them off straight away. And that's not being me being horrible or being rude or whatever, um, or being ignorant or whatever. That's just because I can't be asked with any negativity anymore. I'm at that point now where if you're bringing dramas to my door, then don't bother coming to my door. Just don't bother coming. I mean, I don't, I'm not interested. I've had so, so much negativity in my life and so many problems in my life that when I look back at it, it's because I've fed off that negativity. I've allowed that negativity to come into my life and I've tried to deal with it. Whereas if it's not given any, anything to my family or it's not doing any good to my family, then it's, why, am I, why am I bothering with it? You know I mean, if it's to do with work or it's to do with my family, yeah, I'll give it. If it's negative, I will give it a million percent to turn it into a positive. If I can't, then we'll just we'll adapt and overcome. But when it's something that's that's not important, especially people and the the way they come across or that their you know their mentality, I've got time for it. I've not got time for it, and that's why I have people on my podcast that have been through different traumas and different problems in their life. Because, for one, it's a release for them. Two, it's going to help a lot of people out there that are going through similar things, if not worse or if not less. And three, it makes me realise that I'm not the only person that's been through trauma. I'm not the only person that's been through a hard time. There's people out there that I've been through. Like, I I, I sit, I, I feel bad sometimes when I sit here and go, I've been through this trauma through the military. And then there's someone there that was abused as a child. It's like, like you saying about being an adult, you can, you can adapt and you can work it out in your head to an extent. As a child, you can't. So in my head, it's like, I'm sat here moaning about my PTSD and about my problems, whereas they've been through that. Like, it makes me realise, I think it makes me a more rounded person as well. You know what I mean? It makes me a lot more rounded um, and a lot more uh, empathetic, uh, bit more, a lot bit more empathy towards um people as well if that makes sense yes it does massively and, and there's so many there's so many other implications in this modern day and age because um i mean there's two things that we have to navigate and there's one more thing than maybe others and that's that we're part of the veterans community yeah which i find that as a massively I'm just going to say it, a detrimental effect on people's mental health. In fact, 
it's very often the veterans on my podcast that are the most nervous, yeah. that are the most like Chris can I, you know, they want the, the, they want to call me up first. They want to tell me every aspect element of their story. For, so it's sometimes it's a, I'm not exaggerating if I say three hour phone call and I'm like that trying to like not being rude, but I've got work to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to type my keyboard with it. Yeah. Yeah. And what it comes down to is that we're indoctrinated at a young age to worry what the pack think so that we didn't let yeah. them down. So the truth, and a lot of people can't ditch that. Um, so that's one one element that I think doesn't do veterans favors. It it it's strange because I had three phone calls this week with veterans about work, right? Stuff that 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 they can possibly be helping me with. Tell you what, mate, made me proud to be proud to be a Royal Marine, two of the Marines, and it made me proud to be a veteran because it just all that, it all came flooding back what cracking guys you can meet in the military, you know, and, and girls obviously, but the, these happen to be guys. And um, how easy, you know, there's no back to it. It's like, right, I used to do this. And it's like, no, hello, mate, how's it? Awesome, right, I got this. You, you kind of know instantly yeah. right there's no drama they're professionals so they're not they're not just sort of some keyboard warrior that spends their time slagging people off on facebook or what what you know what whatever it yeah. might be so that's one thing that that is a factor as a as a as a as a as a, as, as a veteran there is this fucking what let's call it a head fuck thing go, go, going on right um, there's also a lot of positives, and I hope I, I hope I've just given an exam, example yeah, there. Definitely. The other thing, of course, is social social media. Yeah. It 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 amazes me that anyone has it that doesn't need it for their business. I don't yeah. know why you'd voluntarily want to be like that all day long. Um. The, the the negativity it can bring into your life yeah in Absolutely. so many ways just the addiction that it's doing to your brain by these little impulses yeah. of, of of um adrenaline that it's or, or whatever the chemical might be serotonin or whatever that that looking at that screen and reading that message and seeing that like it do, do, there's that then there's the the kind of um keyboard warrior element that it just attracts yeah that is a real it's not representative no. you know it's just not representative of of what people are sort of really like um but i mean how many people must have seen something on social media and then gone and committed suicide yeah yeah um, yeah it, it, it just this morning i had a comment from another veteran i'm like Fucking dude, don't worry about my life. You know, yeah. Don't worry about it. it does it, it? It doesn't concern you. But it would be so great if you could just step back and realize that that you're essentially attacking another veteran, a traumatized veteran, in a it, yeah. in a climate of suicide. Like, just stop and yeah. fucking think about that and. Um. Yeah. Interesting life. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah. Stuff. It's all stuff I'm sort of trying to tweak. But some stuff you can't. If you want. If you want to have a successful podcast, you kind of got to have social media, haven't you? Yeah. I've. Uh, I'm trying to come away from it quite a lot. I'm. Um, I'm taking it all off my phone. It's, it. It gets too much. You mean? Yeah, that's a great idea. I mean, I just I have put it all, all take it all away, and I just go on it now and again. Just uh, it's too much. It really is too much. Yes, yeah, that many people. I'll, I'll I'll answer messages and stuff like that uh, when I come to them, but it's constant. You know, some people like want to upload pictures every single day, and it's like I tried it. It's just why it's just too much. I mean, wasting my life. 
when they put up his they have more time with family. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I'm in discussions at the moment with a very, very kind chat. Hello, Bob, if you're watching, um, just about taking over all my social media because it's not, it's just not right, mate. It's not right to even be on your phone for a second when you when your child's in the room. Yeah, and just, I'm, I'm guilty for that, like. Well, we all, mate, we all are. It's the nature of the evil that is social media. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that there are there isn't. Yeah, I'm not saying it might be a lifesaver for a lot of people. I know it is, but isn't that a sad state of society where yeah. you know, I know people that must be approaching 80 years old and they they live on it all day long. They must do, because if you ever send them a message or a or a post or something or a comment, they're right they're like back to you within 30 seconds. And and yeah. um I think we've all probably been been like that at times. So um, what about the old fizz, mate? Are you are you are you um, getting out and jogging around the block? Are you? Are you... Yeah, well, I, I was watching the corner. I was um, I've always been big on my weights and powerlifting and stuff like that. Um, took a step back for a while, um, but we're doing a, a walk at the moment. So uh, my friend Jimmy come to me about a new charity that my mate set up in Liverpool called the Block. Um, a little bit of a plug for him. He's uh, so basically they've they've set up like a coffee hub. And it's got uh, therapy, therapists in there and all that. Um, it's gonna be launched soon. But basically, they need a bit of funds. So we made Jimmy turn around and said, "Right, okay. Uh, why don't we raise some money and do a big um, event, a big walk?" I went, "Yeah, okay. What you fancy?" So he says, "Well, what he's doing is he's going to walk from Liverpool to, to Snowdonia and then to the summit." So we want to do it in three days. It works out, I think it's 30 mile a day. Um, so I've been getting my old, my old veteran carcass back out onto the, uh, back out, back out on the fizz. So we've been getting a few runs in, getting the fizz in, getting the, getting the miles in. We did 34k the other week. Um, just, you know, bear, you know, get a bag on and start walking. So yeah, we're doing that at the end of May, beginning of June and uh, raise as much money as we can for the block. Um, to get you know, doing it crisis teams and stuff in there as well so um, yeah so it's going to be the first thing I've done since I've left the military which is big obviously not as big as yours what, you, what, you're, what you've are what you done but um, it's doing it for a number of things one um, to prove that my old, my old ass can still do it my, my, my mindset's there but I've got I've got little niddly injuries that are telling my brain my brain doesn't listen because of my mindset um, raise some money for uh, the block um, show everyone that's watching what the mind can still achieve you know I mean what what even though I've been through so much we can still achieve greatness you know I mean and one of the big, main ones for me is to show my family my daughter what I'm made of you know I mean so it's hey, a bit of a thing I think you've shown them that already I haven't started yet so Two things left I want to talk about, Steve, if it's okay with you. One is um, this incredible interview you did. And let me get this right, because I called it Vice earlier on, so I or, or probably would get um, get put up against the wall and shot in media terms for getting that wrong. It was actually the Lad's Bible, wasn't it? Lad Bible, yeah. yeah. You, you did an interview with them in which you discussed PTSD with, a, with an older veteran. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a bit about that and where? Why have I seen the trolls thing come in? Well, basically, um, a lady that runs the Legion in Liverpool. Um, she was at uh, one of the funerals for one of my mates in 2018 that we lost um, to suicide, and basically, we got talking and it came up saying we need a, a young veteran to go on and do like a comparison on Bad Bible. And, uh, documentary called The Gap so obviously yeah, I was a bit um and on about it but I thought with the chance to talk about PTSD and get it out there I went on um, so it was me and John Dennett Mr John Dennett um, he's 97 98 now when we sat there we talked about our time in the military he was a Normandy vet um, and obviously I'm a obviously Iraq and Afghan vet and we did a bit of comparison um, we just we talked about two and a half hours um, 
real time and we literally he talked about his time and talked about his mental health and stuff like that and how he he was not shamed but he couldn't really talk about it you know what I mean um, and then basically it went viral 28 million views um, at this point and then we did a second one which was me um, reacting to trolls to their comments so I think they did about 10 to 15 comments they brought up on the screen and then I would read them and then I had to react to them um, Can you give some examples of what sort of things that these trolls would say or were saying? I can't remember off the top of my head, but they're basically around, you know, you shouldn't be there, or you're a murderer, or if you can't handle, what was the, the main one? If you can't handle war, why did you go? Stuff like uh, yes. that. I mean. yeah. So basically, I, I read the first comments and the blood started boiling, you know what I mean? I was like, right, I thought that's not going to get me anywhere. Me kicking off, is they're just going to have to, beat most of it out because it's just going to be the language used, you know what I mean? So I went in with like a sort of comical attitude and I sort of switched it around. Um, it, it worked quite well, to be honest, but I sort of switched it around and made them look like the idiots, you know what I mean? Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just stupid, just stupid things that kids say, you know what I mean, or trolls say. Um, I walked away, you know, there's a lot of people that were messaging saying, that they were angry about it and the, the way that these people have been talking to me and about John and stuff like that. But I laughed it off. I felt uh, quite, uh, quite, quite like, uh, like a bit of a victory was won because, you know what I mean? I think, getting, I think getting angry about it would have been the wrong way to approach it. I'm just, um, for your information, I was just getting it up on screen. Oh. Um, so we're looking at the gentleman that you were talking about. He's got a few gongs, hasn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. We're actually um, between, well, between us, but he's actually coming on my podcast after lockdown, F, and we're going to uh, have a good chat and get, it's going to be all raw footage, so it's going to be F, and we're going to get it out there that we didn't talk about on Lad Bible. So, like a mini RV. Sorry, for our friends at home, then, I think I just inadvertently cut my, uh, cut my audio when I was saying, so I was just, uh, if I, if you missed it, I was just saying to Steve that I was getting his uh, interview up on the screen. I won't play you any of it because we'll just get hit for copyright, but gosh, um, that's a lot of views, isn't it? That's a lot of views. It, it is funny, the old, not, I don't want to say divisive comments because Everyone has freedom of expression on the internet, don't they? And everyone sees things a different way. That I, I, I think the issue is, I think you should be allowed to say what you like. Yeah. Just, just, just be polite. It seems yeah, that's to it. be, be nice. yeah. Because when you, when you just, when you're scathing and and so angry, and and that that just reflects on where where sort of where you are and. Yeah, yeah, it does, yeah. Immediately people, you know, if they don't block you, then they just won't take you, they're not going to take you seriously and there's no need for it. You put your, Be eloquent, put your point across, be polite. I don't expect people to believe in um, in in these these wars. I mean, I, I think that's, I think that's a, an admirable thing, not, yeah. um, but, and also people kind of make assumptions, don't they? They think that, that my opinion is like this, this guy I'm attacking, he thinks like this. Like, dude, you, you, you don't know what I think. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, unless I've specifically said something, it's like you don't really know what I think. Um, yeah. I actually agree with you. It's just you're being <laughs> so fucking rude with it that, yeah. that, you know, you're not, you're just, like I say, you're not going to get taken seriously. Um, can we talk a bit about your experience of combat then? Um as much as you feel comfortable to, it's just youngsters get a very rose-tinted view of what combat is. And part of the reason is, is that, you know, veterans don't talk about it. And, and I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing, Steve, you know, I mean, I think I said this the other day when someone writes me and says, Chris, I'm a, you know, 
joining the Marines next month, but I'm a bit scared of leaving home. I'm tempted, mate. Say, That's not as scary as shoving a fucking bayonet through someone's face. <laughs> do, do you get, you know, I'm so, sorry to be so graphic, yeah, yeah. folks, but this is essentially what we're talking about in war. Hands on. Look at um, Brian Wood, MC, who was on the podcast the other day. I mean, that's literally what his boys had to, that's what his boys had to do. This is the, this is the, re, this is the reality. Um, you know, I think people would be a lot less quick to support these conflicts if they had to go and do that. It's like, yeah, yeah okay. Exactly. There's a complete stranger over there who's never done anything to you in your life. I want you to go and kill him. Why? Because yeah. I told you to. But no, no buts. Go. It, yeah. It's, it's, I'm being a bit flippant, but this is the, the, the sort of, you know, this can, this, this I think is must be hard to deal with, with for a lot of, you know. Yeah, it's weird. It's different with me because um, I don't know. I never, I never struggled with the contact. I never, quite, I never questioned it, especially with Iraq when I had the first contact. My ass went, obviously, but. Your drills kicking straight away. I mean, the when the, we had one shoot, one one shot that comes straight through between me and top cover, the right and top cover, we just reacted straight away. We we're on an LMG, we we, we we suppressed the uh, the area, um, and then you know we reacted accordingly. To me, it was just obviously the adrenaline kicks in and all that, but after that first one, it's you don't. I don't want to say the wrong thing about offending people. Are, I didn't care. You know what I mean? I didn't. I was. I welcomed the firefights. I welcomed the contacts. It wasn't until I got to Afghan where I realised that it was. I will say it. It was all bullshit. You know what I mean? It's like we're literally being put in the middle of a fucking desert, round of IEDs, and you're asking us to be armed guard, take ground, mm. just for it to be taken back that night. You know what I mean? It's like this is bullshit. The only reason I fought so hard and so well and all the rest of it is because I had young lads there. I had lads there that were now the old me. You know what I mean? So I had to fight hard to get them home. And that's all that matters. And that's when they say brothers in arms and that's it's very true. I didn't care about the operation. I think I'd, I'd do the operation and complete the best of my ability, but it was them lads. That that's the only reason I stayed and the only reason I fought. You know what I mean? Why I fought so hard. Every contact that come in was treated as the first. It was treated with pure aggression. Um, it was precise. It was done to the best of my ability. You know what I mean? And every contact was always forgotten about as soon as I got back into the FOB. You know what I mean? As soon as I got back into FOB Jackson or Wiston or wherever I was, I was very quick to forget about it. Even if we had a bad, a bad case or a bad scenario or whatever, where we had an injury or we had a death, um, or multiple casualties. Um, I was very quick to scrap it out of my brain, out of my head, and move on to the next bit, like you talked about with uh, the corporal. I was very quick to go right, okay, because I had lads there that were looking at me all the time. If I sat there and quivered and thought about it and you know, leaned on it a little bit, it, it, it reflects your know I mean? So it was a case of, right, get one in, you know, unload weapons, and straight away, let's go right straight into admin. Yeah, let's get the kit squared away. Let's get prepped for the next next stop. Let's get. We had a river flowing through sank through from Jackson. So like down the river, bit of morale. Get in the river, cool off, cool off. Wash your kit, blah blah. blah back up. You know, burst into flames and just chill, ready for the next O group. And I always kept that routine and that that go in your main. So it's weird because I speak to a lot of mates and they go, oh, "Do you remember this firefight?" And I go, no. and then people turn around and go, oh, "Do you remember when we we were in?" Uh, we're in the art, we're in uh, Bulldogs in Iraq, and we did that big operation and we stormed in and we got hit by two snipers and the J Dam. And I was like, because the dark things, and to me, and this sounds quite bad, but those contacts and those firefights are irrelevant in my life now. And what my brain's done, what I believe my brain's done, is it's wiped out the useless dark parts of my life. And I'm trying to. My basically my bookshelf is full of different stories like yourself. We've got dark, we've got horror, we've got thrillers, we've got this, that, and the other. 
and every one of them has got a negative story to it. And what my brain has, has struggled with to put it into uh, to put it into some sort of way is that it can't get any more good that bookshelf until it's forgotten the darkness and the shit. So over the time, without me knowing about it, those firefights and those those problems and that negativity is slowly starting to black out from my memory. And I've started to fill my bookshelf with happiness and positivity and good things and the future and the good things from the past. I remember sitting there and having a laugh in the bulldog park and in the, in the tank park and we're up and like, we're wrestling arse and round before a patrol and we're fucking just being lads, you know what I mean? But I don't remember getting out on the ground and brassing up two compounds because when people turn on to me, go, oh yeah, we did this and that and I get a little image and go, yeah, I remember that, yeah. I remember when um, well, well, when well, our commander got his foot stuck on the door, and we had to use use his body to get the door open to take the, take the room and stuff like that. But most of this, the stuff, it's it's irrelevant. It really, it's in my life now. It's irrelevant. Back then, it was important because we, on a debrief, you look at it and go, "What can you improve? How you better yourself? Progress as a soldier." Now it's like that's not helped me progress as a human. So, well, a lot, a lot of stuff's been blacked out. Like even like with dates and stuff. And like my mate talks about Kosovo and he says these names. I go, oh, uh, yeah. I remember that now, yeah. But like, they're irrelevant, really irrelevant. But as it goes down to the combat and to the fighting, I felt not at home with it, but I felt it was right because I put that down to the conditioning in the army, the military. You condition that much that when you do come to do it in real time, it's still in your head, just an exercise. It's still just going through, you know what I mean? And because I've done so much, it was normal. But you can do that, you get, to go, get up and go to work, you come home, you hit. You do that for so many years. When it comes to Monday, you don't get up because you've got a day off, you go, I feel weird here, not going to work. And it's exactly the same condition of the army. You do it, you do a section attack every single day for a year. And then next minute you don't do it, you go, a little weird here. Oh, where's my rifle? And that's something you do when you get out of the military. I was always like that. You know, that quick, blind, shock, panic, you go, shit, where is it? You go, oh, doesn't matter. And that's it's down to the human brain and being conditioned, and it's how you uncondition that. And it's not about forgetting it; it's about replacing it with a new passion, with a new focus. And that's what a lot of lads, and girls, when they get out, is they're not regimented and they haven't got a passion. You know what I mean, they're not, they're not, they're still trying to bleed green, but at the same time, they haven't got something to bleed over. If that makes sense. So it's like rather than having a new passion, a new goal, a new business, you're focused on the past. Yeah, the, uh, do, you, do, do you think that's a slight issue with these veterans trauma groups? Yeah. Um, I Let's just say, you know, I get added to them because people, that's what, let's say a Facebook group, people will just naturally add you to it, right, because it's support for veterans and da 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 I, I will say I don't really hang around there because I, for a start, you know, I, I, my, what I found is if you try to offer support, it's not really wanted, you know, not, not, um, in addition, obviously my life's moved on. I'm, I'm not, I've, I've got all my strategies in place, so I don't, it's not like I need to, I got support. I got my mates, you know, and and I like you yeah. said, you 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 pick them carefully as you get o- older, and you and you let a lot go. Um, but I see a lot of people dining out on their PTSD, dining out. Maybe that's a bit rude, or, or or maybe wearing it as a like their badge of honor, or or and. Yeah. Not not really yeah. looking for ways. Live, to- live, the, people, people live off their, I would just say, they live off their condition. They let their condition become them, become their yeah. identity. Rather than going, right, okay, I've got this 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 thing going on. Let's adapt and overcome and let's work through it. And if I can't work through it, I'll jump over it. You mean, I want to get back to how I was. It's not like, well, most people go, oh, well, I've got PTSD now. That's who I am. That's just who I am. And mm. even when, it, it, like I say, it's it's called self conditioning in my head because you're self conditioning yourself to believe that you have got a problem, and that problem becomes worse and worse and worse. And then you Google it, and then you 
your mind naturally believes that you've got that problem worse than it is, and it get it can escalate. Obviously, I'm not saying you know, that people have got PTSD, you know, of making it worse. But there is certain individuals, certain people that will look into it too much and let that become them. Become them. You know what I mean, yeah. And that's where you need to step away, and that's where you need to find a new focus and new passion, because it will end. It's interesting what you said about Afghanistan being horseshit, because <laughs> I, I mean, I. I probably a lot of people listening are too young to remember the precursors to why we went into Afghanistan. And a lot of us at the time went, well, actually not, not at the time. It took me about four years to go, well, that ain't right. <laughs> that yeah. narrative ain't right. Right. Two guests on my podcast who've both been on, on the podcast separately. I'm not going to give their names because I don't know how they both stand with respect to being recognized but they hooked up recently and they uh, smuggled themselves into afghanistan and they had to dress up with all the you know all, all the local gear and and this and the, the old beards and that sort of stuff and and they had a, a camera between them and the report that i got just yesterday was like that country is in a mess. Yeah. Taliban stronger than ever. Right. And I'm so sorry to veterans that are listening that fought or that lost brothers or sisters there. Fucking awful. But some of us yeah. said this 21 years. Well, you know, 21 years ago now is, whoa, hang on. Let's not invade. You know, lots of people said it and they were laughed at, right? Taliban stronger than ever, country in absolute shambles, and the heroin, the, the poppy production, which was banned under Taliban. I'm not commenting on Taliban, folks, but I'm just saying it, it was, is now like it's just huge, right? Yeah. And uh, the more astute amongst you will know who controls the, the drug trade in, uh, on the planet. And what why they do. So yeah, what a what a sad fucking legacy, eh? Yeah. For, for what, yeah. you know? Anyway, on a more positive note, mate, what other than your yomp or your run, what what else does the future hold? Um well obviously you've got me my channel, my podcast. Um that's growing. Uh, very young, but it's it's getting there. Um, also, I've heard, brand. Got, um, I've heard you've got an awesome guest coming up, mate. Have you real handsome dude? Was he former Royal Marine? I, I just I heard something. Who, who Tony? <laughs> Tony Hayes, yeah, definitely not Tony. No, <laughs> Tony, if you're watching, yeah, well. joke, joking, brother, what a, what a lovely man, and what a, what a, you know, what what uh, what a mountain he's climbed, you know. Yeah, that's it. No, um, no, I can't wait to have you on, mate. Really can't wait to have you on. It's going to be a, you set a, let's set a date and let's get it going. Yes, definitely. You can park your camper van outside mine. <laughs> i got to steal one first. Yeah, I can help you with that as well. <laughs> <laughs> well funny enough, yes, so can I. <laughs> well, actually, if it was a Ford Escort, I, I certainly could. Um, Steve, absolutely brilliant, brother. Really you, proud to have you on the show. Um, proud of what you've come through and the message that you're putting out and all the people that, that you're helping. We're Thank going to put all your all your links um, below the video where, where people can find you. And, um, yeah, I look forward to coming up north, as they say, and um, having, our, having our next chat. So thank Come you. Come on, mate. Always. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. You're welcome. And to everybody at home, big love to you all. Massive thanks. If you could like and subscribe, um, my producer keeps asking me to mention that because it, it's just not happening. A lot of people, oh, Chris, I missed that podcast. It's, yeah, you're not even subscribed to the channel. Oh, right. And if you can click the notification bell, uh, that would be great. Uh, anyone struggling out there that's not smashing life, which you should be, 
get into my Facebook group. Um, it's called Chris for All Community or One Life Smash It or something, something a bit silly. Or join us on Patreon. And for, I think it's $8.99 or $9.99 a month, you can join our life coaching group that we have monthly. And you're not going to get this advice for $9.99 a month <laughs> anywhere else. So, yeah, I'll do my best to make it worth it. And that's it. Ciao, ciao.